How's it going guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle and today we're going to be talking about Big Trouble in Little China, the comic book series. This is volume 6 and it is called Old Trouble in Little China. Now this is actually the finale of the main run. Um, this is the, the last issue of the, the regular comics, but it's not the last issue overall. There are still more Big Trouble in Little China comics from Boom Studios. Uh, after this, the, the next thing we'd get would be the crossover, Big Trouble in Little China and Escape from New York. And we get to see uh, the crossover between their Escape from New York comics and their Big Trouble in Little China comics. And we get to see two of, uh, <laughs> two of the characters, uh, two of Kurt Russell's characters meet each other and I, I can't wait to read this, so this is kind of like Volume 7. And then after that, we get a series of three more books, Big Trouble in Little China, Old Man Jack, and we get to see that uh, Carpenter's once again more involved in this, which is always great. Uh, but there are, three vo there are three volumes of Old Man Jack out there, so that's like issues 8, 9, and 10. So even though this is the last of the regular series we still have four more volumes and I'm really excited about all those but in addition to the four volumes I was actually pr browsing my uh, used bookstore and I found something I didn't even know about uh, Big Trouble in Little China has illustrated novels this is Big Trouble in Merry Old England and I think before this there was another one uh, Big Trouble in Mother Russia, so Mother Russia, then Merry Old England. I have to find the first one still. Uh, but there are two illustrated volumes, so yeah, yeah, there's a, a bunch more that I have to talk about. And overall, I'm, I'm really glad that there's still big trouble in Little China stuff that I get to, uh, to read and talk about with you guys here. So even though this is the end, it's not the absolute end, just the end of the main run, the initial part there. Um, now, I'm going to talk a bit about the plot. I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers, but I do want to say my piece on a few plot points and make sure you guys have a basic idea as to what the, the story is about. Uh, that being said, there's kind of a reveal towards the end of issue one that, you know, I was debating, you know, whether to talk about it or not, but really it's so hard to talk about a lot of the story if I don't talk about it. And it's revealed before issue one is out, and it's personally something that I saw coming pretty quick. Uh, so a tiny bit of a spoiler if you guys, it, just a tiny spoiler. But if you guys want to go in completely blind, I definitely recommend uh, reading this. It's a fun finale to the series, but for those of you who want to stick around, uh, let's go ahead and talk a bit about that. Oh, but only no spoiler, no major spoilers for this book. Uh, the movie and volumes 1 through 5 I'll have to talk about a little bit openly. So, especially because the back, Jack in time. Uh, so, like, back in time, but they send him back to 1906 because of the end of the last book. Uh, in order to avoid a death curse, Egg sent Jack and Winona back in time, and they send him to, uh, to early days uh, San Francisco. Uh, start off, credit where credit is due. Big Trouble in Little China, the continuing adventures of Jack Burden and Winona Chi. Uh, she got her name on the title last volume, and it's cool to see that because she's a good character. Uh, the writer is Fred Van Lent, who wrote the last two volumes, and seeing as how this wound up to be six, uh, six volumes, he got to do the, the last half. The artist is Victor Santos, who is... Uh, new to this volume that's one of the things the the last three volumes each had different artists each time but with David McDade, Joe Esma and Brian Carilla there so we get a fun cameo from from the past artists there so that's that's great uh, the colorist is Gonzalo Daughtre the letters by Ed Dukeshire and the cover by Eric Powell uh, so all that being said let's go ahead and take a look at the actual story now we open up in old-timey San Francisco, and we get to see the first ship of Chinese immigrants, the, the eagle there, coming to try to find gold. 
and three characters get off this boat. Uh, one is Egg, who, uh, who we all know. There's this other guy, we'll talk more about him in a minute, and this woman there. So three people get off the boat. They're going to be in the, the California Gold Rush, and we get to see the city is much smaller. Very old-timey thing there, very, uh, very early San Francisco. Uh, we then cut to 1906, and we get to see this cool double-page spread of Jack Burden and Winona Chi just arriving back in time. She's still got her American flag dress on. I, I really do like that. It's a pretty fun costume. It's good to see that we get it get it for a little bit longer so uh, they start fighting because you know you go back in time you get into this big brawl and Winona still knows her martial arts and is able to take on a lot of them but then we get to see you know she Winona's fighting really good and Jack Burton is fighting through his classic dumb luck there so someone throws a sword at him he trips and it hits one of their own guys and you get to see this fun bit where they're like no one's that no one's that lucky. No one's that got that much dumb luck. He must be some sort of sorcerer or something. And this is all in a an illusion. And they fight the the guys off, and they meet this guy, uh, the guy from the beginning, who introduces himself as uh, Zhao there, and asks, "Hey, you two are really good at fighting. You want to be bodyguards?" And they turn him down initially, but then they find out that his business partner is Egg Shen, and they're like, oh, Egg, okay, we will take the job. We need to go meet Egg. So they go underground, and you know how in the movie there's a big labyrinth, the, the underground Chinatown. Now we get to see that also in its infancy, and they go to underground Chinatown, and we meet Egg, and we find out that the woman at the beginning was the love of his, uh, love of his life. And she's dead, and he is super depressed and addicted to opium now. And you get to see that the two of them are good friends. And uh, they say that Egg had some pretty good magic, but now that she's dead, the magic's kind of gone, and he can't really do sorcery right now, which means how are these two going to jump forward in time? That's a bit of a, a dilemma. Uh, you also get... Uh, that reveal that I was talking about, uh, you see this uh, priest thanks Zhao for his donations, but calls him David, and he goes, oh yeah, Chinese words are are uh, really hard for a lot of Americans, so I go by the name David to make it easier for him, and they realize this guy they've been talking to, uh, calling him Zhao, his uh, American name, David Lopan, and you realize that he's the evil sorcerer that they've been fighting most of this time. And that is a really interesting reveal. I really love seeing that at one point in time, uh, Egg and Lopan were actually friends. And you get this really cool debate between Jack and Winona. And Jack's fought him before. He's the main villain of this whole series. And Jack, of course, really doesn't trust him. And Winona's like, oh, he's not evil yet. And Jack's like, you haven't seen what he can do. You would never trust him if you knew. And, you know, you get this kind of bit where you're wondering how long till he does turn evil. And this is one of those things, like, I, I kind of wish that Back in Time had, like, three volumes of its own. Because when he does get evil, it happens relatively quick. And I could have used a, a really good, like, slower turn. I could have used a whole bunch more origins and stuff. You know, it's good what it is, but, like... I could have spent three issues back in time. It's really cool. Um, but I do like that dynamic where she's like, he's not evil yet. And Jack's like, don't trust this guy. Uh, but we also get this big kind of Terminator electricity in the sky. Lightning shoots down. And we see this evil version of Jack. And the dog doesn't trust him. So right away, you know it's bad. Uh, but this is... Uh, the death curse. This is Jack Burden's death that has traveled back in time to seek him out. And he's very tough and can't be stopped. Very, very Terminator. You see the uh, the bullets just passing through him. And he's also got 
no eyes like that like that guy in what was it minority report so a really cool third element you know people will mistake him for jack and he kind of gets this big legend like oh have you heard of sleeveless jack which is kind of ironic because people don't normally know who jack is but now he gets this big reputation as being really tough and at least half of that if not more is just due to his double running around killing people and they're like ah sleeveless jack you gotta you gotta avoid that guy he's crazy so that's a really fun element in there and then the the last bit of a uh, plot the the last element there is you get this bad guy, uh, Mr. Whist, and he is using uh, anti-Chinese uh, racism of the time to sort of build up his business career, and he wants to tear down Chinatown and make his own casino, and he's like, we're going to have a tower, it's going to be eight stories tall, because that was really big for back then. But you also get to see that there are some uh, Chinese people that are throwing in with him, even though, you know, it's not good for their race overall. They're trying to throw in with the winning side, so you don't really know who's going to be a, a traitor, and they're going to have to to fight a lot of these guys. And this is uh, another interesting thing, is, you know, Winona obviously hates these people, you know, as you, you, as you should, and uh, she wants to fight them, and Lopan wants to fight them as well, so you get another force driving her and Lopan together because they have a, a common enemy, even though Jack's like, don't work with Lopan, he's going to turn out to be really evil, so that was a good uh, plot thing there, and also you can see her new costume, I'll flip to a page where you can see it better, uh, they give her new clothes because, you know, they're not going to let her run around in the America outfit the whole time. So they give her uh, more period accurate clothes. And you see this white dress with the blue design and the yellow and the scarf and stuff. She's like, it's a little a little bit like Mulan. That's what that's what she says. But, you know, she's happy for it. Um, and it's cool to see a unique costume for this volume. So that's uh, pretty fun as well. Um, there's also a few really cool set pieces. Uh, one, for example, this bar, the Arkansas, is a boat that washed ashore, and since they can't move it, they just turn the whole thing into a bar, and there's this fun bit where Jack walks up and orders a beer, and they're like, a beer? What are you, some German or something? This is America. We drink whiskey, and he's like, okay, I can drink whiskey, but they give him this big giant barrel of it, and they're like, yeah, yeah, you drink this whiskey now. So uh, some pretty funny bits, you know, getting to see Jack and Winona, each from their own time periods, having different reactions to the the past, and, you know, Jack's tired and just wants to get drunk, and, and she's like, oh, we got to be on our mission and stuff. Uh, but that being said, I won't spoil too much of the rest of the book, you know, there's a lot of interesting stuff that happens here. Um, I feel like all the Fred Van Lent stuff, the uh, the first three volumes was one big story, all interconnected, and you really get pulled into it, and I wanted to read all three of those right at the beginning. All the Fred Van Lent ones, it, it always took me a second, you know, it's like, okay, where each book is its own concept and its own crazy thing happens in each one and it kind of takes me an issue or so to get adjusted to the new concept uh, but once I get adjusted to the new concept I really get into it and I really want to read the whole book all the way through and overall this is a really good uh, good book really cool to see the origins you know you want Egg to get his magic you want to see Lo Pan's origins and plus Jack Burden and Winona Chi are really great characters. They play off each other really well. And I really hope Winona comes back in Old Man Jack. I haven't flipped through that yet. Um, but I really do like the, the two characters and how they play off each other. And they're both really fun. Um, and also, I won't spoil it, obviously. Uh, but this is five issues. This is 21 through 25. And it does the main plot in four issues like they normally do. And issue 25 is kind of a special finale issue. It ties more into the movie and gives the series a really fun place to end. So I really did like issue 25. We got something special for the, the end there. So I, I really did like that as well. Overall, if you've read this series so far, definitely check out the last volume. Why not? It's a fun way to end. You get to see a bit of the origins before everything uh, is over. And plus, it's not really the end. We still got four more issues, and one of them 
uh, Jack gets to meet Snake, so that's <laughs> that's pretty fun. I'll definitely try to get to the, the reviews for the rest as well pretty soon, as well as the reviews for more Escape from New York stuff as well. Anyway, uh, really excited. Uh, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll uh, leave a, a relevant playlist at the bottom. If you guys want to see more, you can click there and see more, and you should be able to see my reviews for the... Uh, the rest of the series, volumes 1 through 5, will be in there as well. So, if you want to see that, click there. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.